uh, f of tg is a subset of t of g. Uh, sorry, t of h. Okay. You follow that reasoning? Okay, so remem remember this. This is like the half, half of the result that we need. All right, we'll, we'll do a similar analysis um, for, for this set. So we'll take a y belonging to this set, and we'll do something similar, and we will get, we'll get the reverse. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get t of h is a subset of this. And then we put the two together, and then uh, we get f of t of g is actually equal to t of h. Right? Uh, but, you know, getting ahead of myself. All right, so let's now do the, the second part. Uh, so we assume now that uh, h, h is a member of this set. So h is now a member of t of h. So um, we just we just take an element that, that belongs to this set, and uh, now what is H? Well, um, yeah. So here's your G. Here's your H. Here's here's some little H that belongs to your set. Big H. Right? Now all, all these elements in G, in H have been mapped to from G. Right? So that that the corresponding element, now it's all one to one, remember? It's uh, isomorphic, so your F is bijective, so everything maps one to one. So uh, there will be an element here, call it little g, that maps to H. Okay? For, for every element in um, H, there is a corresponding element in G, big G, that maps, that it maps to it. Okay? So in other words, we, you can say F of G is H. Okay? So the corresponding element in group G that maps to little h here is little g. Okay? So you, you've, got, you've got that. All right. Now, now because this h little h little h here it belongs to this set, that's the assumption. So, then uh, it follows that if you raise this to the power n, you will get uh, e to the h right? by definition. Right? If if h belongs to this set, it has to satisfy that property. Right? So h to the power n is the the unit of big H, right? So you, you've got that property, right? But what is H? H is f of g raised to the power n. Okay, so, so let's do that. So f of g raised to the power n is just f of g n times, right? f of g, f of g, dot, 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 f of g. And that, that's like n times, uh, sort of like this. N times. All right. Well, once again, now the, the proof is sort of fairly similar to this one. That uh, now remember F is the mapping between it's it's the isomorphic mapping, and therefore it obeys this property again. Okay. So F of G F of G is just F of G G or F of G squared. So F of G three times will be f of g cubed, okay? It's the same, same argument as this, but the, you know, the letters are a bit different. So can you see that this will end up being g to the n? Because right? you've, got, you've, got, you know, you've got this n times. So this, this will end up g to the n, all right? Uh, now, now what? What can we do next? Now, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> OK, 
trying to remember myself. Uh, now, f of g, f of g is h, okay? So h to the n is e, so e, e to the h, e equals h to the n. h is f of, f of g. So this f of, you know, I'll, I'll just rewrite, I'll just put this, okay? So f of g to the n is equal to the unit of h, big H. All right? But can you remember uh, a theorem that uh, if you if you take, wait, well, yeah. f of e to the g is just e to the h. Right? Can you remember that theorem? That the, the unit element in an isomorphism, the unit element of G maps to the unit element of H. The, <coughs> the unit elements map, and in the same theorem, can you remember that the inverses also map? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> if you map something and it gives you the unit in H, this thing in here has to be the unit of G. Right, because it's one to one. Uh, the only thing, the only thing that maps to this, is the unit of G, big G. Right? Has to, because uh, it's one to one. You can't have anything. You cannot have anything else mapping to this. It's one to one, and therefore G to the n has to equal e, e of G. Follow that? <laughs> now. A lot, lot of steps in this reasoning, right? Uh, the guy who dreamt this up, uh, take my hat off to, um, quite ingenious, right? Okay, so now we've proved that uh, g to the n is equal to the unit of this group. All right, uh, now, so what? Mm. Okay, and now again, uh, some comments between the lines. So, okay, so we know that. So, so what can we conclude? All right, now look. Uh, look at this. This g, whatever it is, raised to the nth power equals the unit of g. Well, that means, that means this G belongs to this set, right? See, G here, you, you, you put X as G, so you get G to the N. So G to the N is the unit. Well, that's what you've got here. So this G now is one of these Xs. So G, this little G, belongs to this set, right? So that implies that G belongs to T of G. Right? It satisfies this condition. Therefore, little g belongs to this set. Okay, so g belongs to t of g. Okay, now um, map map this element and map the set from g to h. So just put an f in front of it. So therefore, therefore, f of g belongs to f of t of g. All right. So uh, it's just the same sort of thing as we did here in the previous part. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, all right, now... Uh, but look, f of g is h. Okay, f of g is h. So that means that h belongs to f of t of g. Okay, f of g is, from here, is h. So h belongs to this. So, uh, all right, now, now put this, now put this and this together, right? Now, we started with uh, h being a member of this. We assumed that. So if 
if H belongs to this set, then H belongs to this set. Right? So if F belongs to T of H, that implies that F belongs to F of T of G. Okay? That's the definition of a subset. So I'll say it again. If uh, an element, so H, little h, belongs to this set, uh, then we proved then, then it belongs to this set. And that implies that this set here is a subset of this one. Right? That's the definition of, of a subset. So this set is a subset of this one. Okay? So that implies that T of H, T of H is a subset of this one, of F of T of G. Okay, so that's your second part result. Here's your first part. Now watch. And uh, you know, a really, really beautiful proof, right? Uh, some, sometimes um, you, know, you, you go through a beautiful proof in pure math and it's just, just like a jewel. Uh, well, the first time I went through this, uh, I had that feeling, you know, wow, I was impressed. Okay, all right, uh, look, see, here your f of t of g is a subset of t of h. Here you've got t of h is a subset of f of t of g, all right? Put, them two, put the two together and you conclude that f of t of g is actually equal to T of H. Alright? Okay, now, now for the punchline. You, you combine these two, these two subset arguments, the only way they can be compatible is, is the equality. Alright, All right, now what does this mean? How, you know, what, how can we interpret this? Well, if you map a set this is a set, right? just T of G, it's, it's, it's the set of elements that have this property. If you uh, map this set, you get this one. But this mapping, this F here, is a bijection, right? Because it's the mapping F between these two isomorphic groups. Right? So this mapping here, it's not uh, many to one and it's uh, it's bijective, it's one to one, right, between, between these two sets. And what that means is, whatever the size of this TG is, uh, the size of this one is going to be the same. Okay, that's important, what I've just said, right? The size of this must be the same size as this one. Because your mapping, your mapping is bijective, one to one. All right? Therefore, the size of these two sets is the same. We have proved it. Okay? So if these two groups are isomorphic, then the size of these two sets are the same. Right? And what does that mean? It means that the number of elements in this set, or this group, uh, that satisfy this property is equal to the number of elements in this